The Magic Table. Once upon a time, in an old ramshackle town by the sea, there lived three brothers by the name of Jack, Leo, and Clarence. I think we've made good fortune today, right? Ugh, just stop. My back's aching from all that rowing. Fishing isn't my thing. It's the only feasible job there is, though, unless we leave town. Hmm, hey guys, look over there. Um. <laughs> Here you go, sir. Oh, Jack! Oh, bless you! <laughs> they continued on, passing rundown buildings, which housed poor and unhappy people. Thanks, Henry. This looks great. Their father, Henry, was a skilled tailor and a good man at heart. Father's making good money. As are we. There was more, but we... You needn't explain. Come, let's have dinner. Ow! Oh! Father, you work too hard. You need more rest. <laughs> if my hands are able, so is my needle. <sighs> Father, we need to find better work. But for that, we'll need to travel. It's hard to earn more. It's the only way to provide ourselves a good living. Hmm, you boys really have grown. Well, if that's what you feel, do it. Go and make me proud. And so, the next day, Jack, Leo, and Clarence said their goodbyes and went their separate ways. Wow! Jack reached a huge kingdom. I'm sure we'll find a good job here. Hmm. Oh, a carpentry shop. Seems interesting. He began an apprenticeship as a joiner and started working hard and well. Whew. Can't believe I helped build a whole roof. Today, I'll show you furniture carving. Oh, wow. Over the months, Jack grew into a marvelous carpenter and soon decided to leave. Jack, come with me. What is it? Oh, a piece of wood? Hmm. Little table, spread thyself. Before Jack's very eyes, the piece of wood transformed into a lovely table. A delicious spread laid upon it. It's... it's a magic table. <laughs> Honest work deserves a reward, and that is my parting gift to you. When you're done, just say, little table, close. Oh, thank you. This really means a lot. I'm glad to hear that. And with that, Jack was on his way back home. On his return, he passed by an inn. Whew, I'm starving. No empty tables, huh? Hmm. He spotted a family sitting wearily in a corner. Jack's attention was on the little girl who stared hungrily at everyone's food. For one night, innkeeper, who are those people? Oh, them? They're here for one night, just like you. But they don't have the money for food, only for the stay. Jack felt sorry, so he went over to them and did his magic. Little table, spread thyself. Immediately, the table filled with delicacies and drinks appeared, amazing the entire family. This, this. The innkeeper told me everything, so please help yourself. Oh, thank you, mister. No problem. Please dig in. Once they'd eaten, Jack recited the spell, and the table transformed back into the wooden piece. This piqued the innkeeper's interest. Such an interesting article. I must have it before that man leaves. That night, when the world was fast asleep, the innkeeper stole into Jack's room, swapping the magic table with a normal piece of wood. When morning arrived, 
Jack unknowingly picked it up and continued his travel. Father will be pleased with this. I'm almost home. Henry received his son warmly, and Jack revealed the magic table. Son, this table of yours is a bit small. Ha ha, just wait. Little table, spread thyself. Hmm, what if, and maybe just a, there. Now it's a table. No, that's not it. It's supposed to transform. Jack, now perplexed, kept reciting the spell, but nothing happened. He soon gave up. Somewhere far away, Leo had been working at a mill. Like Jack, he too worked diligently. I heard you'll be leaving soon. Makes me sad to think that. I've learned a lot from you, and even the farmers. I'm forever grateful. You're a good lad. I've something to give you. The mill owner led Leo to a secluded stable, which housed a single donkey. The stable is quite different from the rest. That's because the donkey is a special one. He doesn't lift or carry, but is good for one thing. <gasps> Bricklebrit. The donkey shook himself hard, and coins chimed as they dropped to the ground. Leo could hardly believe it. Oh my, is that gold? Yes, you've worked better than anyone here and are deserving of this gift. Oh, this is really going to help my family. Thank you. Leo packed his belongings and donkey in hand started his return home. He passed the same inn and decided to rest there. I'll have your donkey tied. No, thank you. I need to do that myself. Strange. He must really love his donkey. That night after dinner, Leo realized that he was short of payment. I need more coins. I'll just take this. The innkeeper watched astounded as Leo walked away with the tablecloth. What's he up to, hmm? Leo wandered away to the stables, unaware he was being followed. There, Bricklebrit. The donkey shook itself and immediately, gold coins showered down upon the cloth. Goodness, what an amazing animal. I must have it. So that night, the innkeeper quietly replaced the magical donkey with a normal one. <laughs> I'm gonna be rich. When morning came, Leo left to go home with the swap donkey in hand. Father will be so happy to see you. Leo soon reached home, and how he hugged his dear father. Ha <laughs> ha, father, I'm home. Oof, I can see that. Hey, bro, what's wrong? Hey, nothing. Anyways, father, see what I've got. Leo told his father about the magic donkey. Henry looked doubtfully at it. I feel like you boys are pranking me. What? Why? All right, I'll prove it. Bricklebrit. Bricklebrit. Well, the donkey does have a very golden personality. No, he's... He's supposed to drop gold coins. Leo stared miserably at the poor donkey, not understanding what had happened. Now the third son, Clarence, had been working for a luthier in the city. Hmm, I think this is good. Let me try it. Beautiful, Clarence. And you've only been here a few months. Can't believe you are leaving soon. <laughs> I've enjoyed myself here, but I must return to my family. <sighs> Wait here. Hmm? What is it? Here. This is for you. Try saying, play violin. All right, play violin. 
Oh, wow! Now say shriek violin. Shriek violin. Ah! Stop violin. It's a lovely gift. <laughs> you can use this violin to scare off any people who trouble you. I see. That is indeed a useful gift. Thank you. I will cherish it. And soon, he too was on his way home. Now Clarence had received letters from his brothers concerning their experiences at the inn. This must be the one. Hmm, I know exactly what to do. At dinner time, Clarence sat among the others and spoke about his travels loud enough for the innkeeper to hear. You know, I've chanced upon many wondrous finds in my travels. Magic dinner tables, animals that give treasure, such things. But they're common. I have a really amazing find in my sack here. A complete rarity. <laughs> the innkeeper pricked up his ears at this. Third time's the lucky charm. Maybe this article will be the best thing yet. That night, the innkeeper tried his luck again. Where's the... Ah! There! Hmm... Hmm... C come on! Shriek, violin! The violin jumped out of the sack and played the most hideous noise ever! Clarence watched the violin chase the miserable innkeeper around until finally... Stop, violin! The screeching ceased. Why did you... Return the donkey that gives gold in the magic dinner table to me. What? Never. If not... No, 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 no. Okay, I got it. I'll return them to you. Just please don't play that awful thing. Hmm. Oh, hey, go. Oof. My table. My donkey. Aw, I missed you too. Ha <laughs> ha, welcome back, son. Glad to know one person loves me. Dad, look what I got. Let me guess, a magic bag? A magic violin, actually. Here, let me show you. Play violin. The violin jumped out to play soothing melodies, much to Henry's surprise. Jack and Leo showed off their gifts as well. And Henry finally believed them. Well, I would have never guessed this to be true. I'm sorry I didn't trust you boys sooner. No worries, Father. Luckily, Clarence saved the day. And now you can rest well. The brothers soon built themselves a better house and lifestyle. And with their new skills, they changed the entire town for the better, too. Leo took over the town's finances and helped the poor. I'll buy you some boats to improve your fishing business. Jack began fixing up the town's buildings and homes. That should do it. Thank you, Jack. Clarence gained fame by playing for queens and kings. However, he always enjoyed using his skill for greater happiness. What a busy day. Jack, hurry, I'm starving. The youngest are always the most demanding. I'm starving too. All right. Little table, spread thyself. 
I'll never get used to this. You boys have made me the proudest father ever. He was indeed. The three brothers had been brought up to understand kindness, honesty, and perseverance. It is only such good values that truly bring in the best rewards to life. <laughs>